So now that we've seen uh, some new theorems as well as another way to do a proof, um, we're actually going to do a proof of a theorem. And we haven't done that a lot. We actually saw one in, in um, I think it was section 2.6, where we showed a proof before we actually gave you the theorem. Um, we don't prove every theorem. It, they are all provable. We just don't spend time doing that in our class. So this proof, I want to just stress something about a proof. A proof of a theorem does not mean you actually use the theorem and the proof. Does that okay. make sense? So it's showing the long way, and the theorem would then take us through the shortcut. Exactly. So we're trying to, basically, we're trying to show why it works. Okay. In a sense. All right? So we can't, again, we can't use the actual theorem in the proof. Now, you're going to, I think there's one in your classwork tomorrow, you're going to have to do a proof of a theorem. I think it's a guided proof. They're going to give you some helpful hints. But this is something we'll do here and there. So notice the proof of theorem 3.2. Now, you may not remember, and I don't remember numbers, so you might have to look back at your notes and reference it. Um, but it also tells you the given and proof here. So basically, this is what you'd be given and this is what you're saying is happening with this theorem. So we're okay. going to try to prove how do I get from here to here. All right. All right. So here's a picture to reference to. And we're going to do two column proof. And then we're actually going to show you the same proof with the flow proof. Actually, Ms. Hoker is going <laughs> to kind of show you this. So we already have our given written down. And you guys should have that too. And let's kind of talk about from the picture what this means. So they said Ray BA is perpendicular to ray BC. So to show perpendicular, I'm going to put my little box in there, right, okay. to show perpendicular. Now, again, we can't just jump right from the given to the proof. I know you're looking at it, you're like, okay, I see angle one and angle two. Right, and of course they are. So sometimes it helps to, like, think backwards. I want to first ask you, what does this mean? If two angles are complementary, what does that mean? That means that their measures would add to equal 90 degrees. Okay, so I know there's some is going to equal 90 degrees. So if I can show somewhere before this end result that angle 1 and 2's measures add up to 90, then I've proven they're complementary. Okay? Makes we've sense. done this before in Chapter 2, proving complementary angles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what we work, we're working with. This is all we know, but we also know from the picture, so keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. Right? So depending where you want to start. I, a lot of times I start with the given and feed off of that. So if I know... Ray BA is perpendicular to Ray BC. What does that mean? Well, when two lines are perpendicular, that means that they'd form a right angle. So mm -hmm. two rays being perpendicular would still form a right angle. So which angle is going to be a right angle? So angle ABC is a right angle. Oops. It looks like it's together. <laughs> is a right angle. And what's my reason? Uh, that's the definition of perpendicular. Good deal. And keep in mind that those definitions work both ways. So if I had that something was a right angle, I also know that there's perpendicular. Perfect. There. All right, and I already labeled right angle perpendicular. Love right? it. Now, we can elaborate off of that if we can say something more. Or if you're not sure, you can always keep in mind where you're going to. So keep okay. in mind that too. So I'm going to let you kind of, you take me through this, Mrs. Hoker. Well, tell me what you're thinking. I'm thinking that I know I want to get to a sum of 90. And right now I know the whole angle ABC, but I haven't talked about like angle one and angle two, which is what the ones that I'm trying to find that sum of. Okay. Um, but I'm remembering back that we did an angle addition postulate before. That Would that be helpful? You, allowed you to add angles together. Yeah, wow. and I think that if I do that, so I'm going to say that um, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to, well, I know it's a right angle, but I know that the, Say our angle addition postulate didn't allow me to put numbers in there. That was just really stating what angles together would add to equal what other larger angles. So I just want to say the measure measure of angle ABC. And I like how you said that, Ms. Hograby. She Again, the angle addition postulate, which is the reason, I'm going to go ahead and write that down, it allows you to add two adjacent angles to get another a bigger angle. It doesn't say two angles add together to equal an actual number. All right, so we can't just say, even though you know that angle ABC ends up going to be 90, we need to somehow state that somewhere in our proof before we can use that. Okay, well now looking at our step two, because I've used step one, but I haven't really used step two yet. Mm -hmm. But since we knew it was a right angle, we know that all right angles measure 90 degrees. So I could go ahead and say the measure of 
angle ABC is 90. Oh, and now I can do some substitution. Okay. I see What's it. What's my reason? Then? Um, that is the definition of a right angle. All right, so this comes from step two. So step two led us to step four. Okay. All right, so I'm kind of giving that a hint because we're going to do this as a flow proof just to kind of think where does one piece like come from. All right, so we've used uh, step one, we've used step two, we still haven't, we just okay. wrote step three. Right, but now I think we're ready to do some substitution. So let's put that 90 in place of the measure of angle ABC to say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two will equal 90. Good idea, so substitution, excellent. Now, you mentioned that for the proof that once I got to the sum equals 90, that I've pretty much done my, I've pretty much proved it. Do I need to actually make that last step? Because I know that it's supposed to match up, right? Yes. So just because I know that I'm there, I need to make that last step still. Yes. Okay. So I want to say then that angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Oops, I almost wrote supplementary. <laughs> And that reason is, oh, is that, that must be the definition of complementary. You're exactly right. And again, like Mrs. Tokery was saying, this is where we wanted to get to in order to get here. Kind of, I was going back and forth. So this is what we wanted to be able to prove that. Um, notice steps five and six, those are very commonly followed one after another. If you're ever trying to prove complementary, you gotta show they add up to 90 first. If you're given complementary, a lot of times you say two angles that add up to 90. They're kind of interchangeable a lot of times because of this definition idea. All right, so we, we proved theorem 3.2. If, if it doesn't ask you to prove a theorem and they just give you this information, the theorem allows you to go from here to here with the theorem, all right? Um, that's what's super nice about theorems. You don't have to do all this work. But we want you to see where things come from so that you kind of believe why it works. Well, and these are theorems that we don't use a ton. Yeah. So you may forget them. And if you do, that's okay. You can still get there. Yes, that's what we want you exactly, to realize Exactly. Exactly. There's other ways. Theorem is not the only thing. So let's see this in a flow-proof form just so you can get comfortable with that look. All right. And since we did the last one top to bottom, I'm going to do this one side to side, but I have a feeling I may run out of a little bit of room. So there may be a little wrapping, and that's okay. Um, I just want you guys to be able to see what this looks like. Now, we only have one given statement. So we only have one thing to worry about. We don't have to separate givens because there's only one thing that's given. And do you remember what was important, Mrs. Palermo, when I write this given? What do I need to make sure that I put around that? The little box or rectangle, I guess, looking thing. Yes. And right below that box, I'm going to write the word? Given, because that's the reason. You got it. Okay, so that's what I'm given. Now, because I know that those two are perpendicular, what does that tell me? That means that angle ABC is a right angle. Okay. Notice again, each statement is separated by its own little box. There's the arrows to show the flow. That reason was? The definition of perpendicular. Okay. And we actually had one more thing. What does it mean when I've got a right angle? That means the measure of angle ABC is equal to 90. So again, notice that flow, how Mrs. Hooker is doing this. It's saying, okay, if I know this, then what? It's th those kind of asking this question, definition of right angle. Perfect. Now, does the, the measure of angle ABC equals 90 lead to something else then just by itself? Nope. No. Nope. Okay, so we need another statement. Yeah. And we don't have another given. Nope. But let's go back for a minute and let's think, what was the statement that we made that we haven't used yet? That, that didn't come from the given, didn't right? didn't come from the given. So it had to come from the picture. Came from the picture. So that means, oh, step th that step three, that, ang that angle addition postulate. Right. 
Angle addition postulate is one of those things that doesn't come from something other than the picture. Okay. Same thing with segment addition postulate. So same thing with linear pair postulate. Same thing with vertical angle theorem. Those are things that come from the picture. So where do we put that? Does that come after, do we put an arrow from angle ABC's measure equals 90? We don't want to put an arrow because that would say it's flowing from that oh. thought. So we're going to actually start it almost just like our given information. We're going to just put it down below and we're going to say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle ABC. And that's because of AAP, angle addition postulate. Again, notice that this does not have an arrow from anything else. This is its own statement based off of the picture. It is given. It's given to us in the picture. But we don't use... We the don't use given, given as our reason. Yes. But yeah, but I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay, now, what was the next thing that we did then? Well, because I wanted to prove that in the complementary, I think we used that, that piece, um, the measure of angle ABC equals 90, and replaced the 90 in for angle ABCs in that statement we just wrote. Exactly. So I'm going to get rid of this. I want you to think that that's my flow. Mm -hmm. But we're going to use both of these statements. This statement and this statement, both, to make what new statement? The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 90. And that was because we substituted. So notice again that when it takes two statements to make a new statement, we're going to show an arrow coming from each one to show that both of those together flow into that new statement. Okay. And that reason was? Substitution. Okay. The last thing that we stated is after I knew that there are two measures added to equal 90 was that what? That angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. And I know that because? The definition of complementary. And there would be my flow proof. Notice it's the exact same stuff as what we did before. All the same statements. We didn't even have to separate out our given this time. So, But you're able to see that flow a little bit easier than just having random numbers. Yeah, and I, and I, I think and I, one like this, what's nice about it is because in the two column, you throw in that angle addition postulate and it almost seems like it comes from the stuff before, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the flow proof allows you to see that that's something that came from the picture and see that connection with everything else. Right. You never have to use a flow proof after today if you don't love it. So I always have a student or two every year that they use it sometimes uh -huh. on those proofs that it really helps to get that visual. Yeah. But after your homework to, or your classwork, classwork tomorrow, you won't have to use them again if you don't want to. We will be sticking with two column. Both are great. Yes.